Hello, hello. So in this video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be performing a rejected takeoff. And I'm going to be talking about the rejected takeoff procedure and what steps you need to take and what order they need to be taken in. We're currently sat at Luton Airport on runway 26 and we're just lined up and ready for takeoff. The aircraft is configured. Um, as you can see, if we have a look at our central ECAM, we've got the takeoff memo, everything uh, is ready to go there. So. For this rejected takeoff, what I'm going to do is I'm going to accelerate and then stop the plane on the runway. So if we have a look at the speed tape on the primary flight display here, you can see that our V1 speed is 102 knots, 102 knots there. And you can double check that if you come down to the MCDU here, go into performance and on the takeoff page, you've got the V speeds there. So V1, 102, V rotate and V2. So remember that any at any point up to the V1 speed, a pilot can reject the takeoff. However, once you're past the V1 speed, then the pilot is committed to take off regardless of what happens to the aircraft. So in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reject the takeoff and I'm going to stop the plane once we reach 90 knots. Now, you begin the takeoff roll as normal. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the throttles up to the flex takeoff position. And then I'm going to, uh, at 90 knots, I'm going to move the throttles back to idle very quickly. Now what will happen is the aircraft will decelerate extremely quickly because we've got uh, the auto braking system set to max. And we've also got our spoilers armed as well. So when we reduce the throttles from either our takeoff go around or a flex detent back to idle, the auto brakes automatically enable the spoilers will automatically extend and the aircraft will stop very quickly. Now the documentation which comes with the Aerosoft says to also put out the reverse thrusters and then to retract those at 70 knots and then also to disable the auto braking system at about 30 knots. Um, for this video I'm not going to do that because as I said the deceleration is going to be extremely quick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the reverse thrusters out until about 30 knots and then let the auto braking system bring the plane all the way to a stop. And then after we've stopped I will talk about sort of the various steps that you need to do to kind of almost kind of quote unquote reset the plane and get it ready for takeoff again. Uh, so what I want you to do is keep an eye on the lower ECAM display here because uh, you'll see when the auto braking system will enable when we reject the takeoff and you'll also see the reverse thrusters open up as well uh, once we begin slowing down so enough talking let's get on with it so gonna bring the throttles up to about 40% like you would for a normal takeoff make sure everything's stable and then go up to flex so once we reach 90 knots I'm gonna reduce the throttles to idle and then hit F2 on my keyboard to enable the reverse thrust. So that's 80. So we go idle and reverse thrust. So you can see we've got reverse thrust and the spoilers are armed and the auto brake system is active. So put the reverse thrust back to idle about there and we'll stop the aircraft there. Now just before the aircraft comes to a complete stop you'll notice that the auto brake system disabled. Auto braking is flashing there so it actually disables itself once the aircraft comes to a stop. And you can see if you look outside we're very very slowly rolling forward. So that is a rejected takeoff. So now what do we need to do? Well now first thing that we need to do is vacate the runway so we're just going to apply a little bit of pressure, a little bit of thrust sorry, to get the aircraft rolling forward again. Now if you have a look at the lower ECAM here you can see it should be on the wheel page by default if you've got nothing selected look at the brake temperatures you can see that even after we've been stopped for a while now but the brake temperatures are still climbing so that's something that you need to be aware of so we're rolling forward so now that we're rolling again what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the flaps up all the way and I'm also going to disarm the spoilers so that kind of resets the spoilers and the flaps there What we're going to do is we're just going to turn off to the right here, just to vacate the runway. Uh, 
And what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to bring the aircraft to a stop on the uh, taxiway here as well, just so I can talk about the next few steps. So I'll just hit the brakes there. Now, you don't have to stop. You can do the next few steps as you're taxiing back down to the end of the runway. But just for the ease of the video, I'm just going to stop the aircraft there. So after you leave the runway, what you need to do is you also need to turn off all of your lights that you would have turned on for takeoff. So the strobes, you can set to auto or off. Runway turnoffs come off. The landing lights can be retracted and the nose light can be returned back to taxi. Okay, so that's the aircraft pretty much secure and uh, off the runway safe and sound. So now what we need to do is just keep an eye on the brake temperatures here make sure that the brake temperatures start to uh, come back down. So if you remember for our before takeoff, we needed to check the uh, brake temperatures before we took off. What we want to do is we want to make sure that the brake temperatures are below 150 degrees Celsius for takeoff. So I'm just going to bring it around here. So at the moment, the outer wheels are at 175 and the inner wheels are at 180. So we'll just... Uh, get around this turn here we'll just start heading back down towards the end of the runway again they're not going to be lined up perfectly but that's not the uh, the point of this video so um, just bring up the wheel page manually there so you can see the big temperatures are at about 175 and 180 so what I'm going to do is just switch on the brake fan there as well just for takeoff you can see here that the upper ECAM now has reset and it's asking us, or it's giving us a little takeoff memo here. So we need to kind of reconfigure the aircraft for takeoff once again. So auto brake, we set to max. The spoilers, we need to arm. And then the flaps, we need to go for takeoff. So that was position two. So if we just look down here very quickly, set the flaps to position two for takeoff. Wait for those to extend into position. They're in position, and then we've got takeoff config. Hit the test button, and the takeoff config is back to normal. And then that is the plane reconfigured for flying. So, all we would do now is just simply taxi back down to the end of the runway. And then, before we enter the runway, we turn on all of the lights again, such as the landing light, the nose light goes to turn off to, to take off. Sorry, uh, the runway turn offs go on, and also the strobe light goes back on when you're re entering the runway. Okay, so we're back down here at the end of the runway again, and I just want to bring something to your attention very quickly. So, at the moment, we've still got the brake fan on, and you can see that the temperatures have come down nicely, so we're now at 115 and 120 on the inside wheels. You'll notice that we have this green bar here over one of the wheels. So the reason we've got that green bar is there is that indicates the hottest of the four wheels there. And the green bar will often show up if the temperature is above 100 degrees Celsius. So in case anyone's wondering, that's why that is there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go for takeoff again. But I'm going to do another rejected takeoff just to kind of go through the process again and just show you. Because uh, it all did happen very quickly. So we turn off the brake fan there. And then before we enter the runway, we can turn the strobes on, turn the runway turnoffs on. Landing lights go on, nose light goes to taxi. Let me just increase the throttle slightly. And the aircraft is now configured to take off again. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do the same thing again. I'm going to go up to uh, flex temperature. I'm not going to go down to the, the far end of the runway. Or sorry, the I'm not going to turn left and go to the, the end of the runway. I'm just going to take off from uh, or start my takeoff roll from this position here. So just going to bring my view down again so you can keep an eye on the two ECAM displays there as we go. So make sure you've got no page selected there and it should default to the wheel page there. The reason the flight control page pops up is because I'm using my controls to uh, to change it so that changes what's shown on the, uh, the flight controls there. Okay, so we're lined up. So we go 40%. Up to flex. And then at 90 knots, I'm going to reject the takeoff again. So 
So 70, 80, 90 knots idle. You can see auto brakes are enabled. I'm not going to use any reverse thrust this time. But you can see the spoilers are up and the aircraft is coming to a stop. Now see the aircraft stops there. And then keep an eye on the brake temperatures again. This is the main thing that you need to worry about when uh, doing a rejected takeoff is just how how far the brake temperatures will rise even after stopping. And also just one other thing to note, at 300 degrees Celsius you're actually going to get a little warning. You're going to get uh, an amber caution light here on your um, kind of master caution uh, light slash button up here and it's going to bring up a caution on the upper ecam as well saying telling you to turn on the brake fan but you can see there after we've stopped we've been stopped for quite you know quite a number of seconds now and the temperature is still rising so uh, that's just something that you need to be aware of there And there you go, there's an example of that uh, warning. So it says, we've got master caution there, and then it says brakes are hot. So brake fan, turn on, and then delay takeoff to allow the brakes to cool. And you'll notice also the brake fan has a little hot indicator light there as well. So you just turn it on, and then let the brake temperatures cool down to below 150 degrees Celsius. Uh, so you're ready for takeoff. And that's about everything for this video. So it was a nice short little one, this one, but uh, hopefully it helped. So uh, as always, I just want to thank all of my Patreon supporters very quickly for supporting me there. It does mean the absolute world to me, so thank you very much. And of course, thank you everyone for watching. So until the next time, thank you for watching and take care out there and I will catch you all later.